this is a fun one. Uh, Daniel wants to know who is your favorite songwriter or and or favorite band. Wow. Well, I could be. Uh, I, I could. I, I could. Uh, you know, promote myself by saying it's the Voids, and I'll be opening for them this coming Friday and Saturday in uh, Texas and Dallas and Houston. Oh yeah, uh, you're doing something with uh with a band. Yeah, well, I'm just oh, I'm doing comedy before. Uh, yeah, the Voids, uh, Julian Casablanca's newer band. Nice. Uh, and yeah, I, I just had Julian on uh, the Redacted Interview Show last week, and he's he's been talking more about getting money out of politics and stuff like that. And the Voids have a lot of political songs, so uh, it's pretty cool. So that's pretty great. Um, outside of that, I don't know. I listen to I listen to some older stuff like The Doors, and I and I like political rap, and but. Uh, I'm certainly, uh, I just have found myself in the past 10 years having a lot less time for listening to much music. So I feel like a bit of an idiot when people bring up popular or even just current music. <laughs> you know, I, I uh, that's cool that you're a Doors guy. I too am a Doors uh, guy or Doors person. And I feel like people, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty into music. I, I feel like people either love the Doors or hate them. I don't know many yeah. people that are in between about the doors and, and I get it how they're not for everyone. I freaking love them, man. And there's yeah. actually, there is a fantastic, if you're ever in town and they're playing, we'll, we'll go out. There is a fantastic doors tribute band here in town in Los yeah. Angeles. They're based literally right in Venice. So right where the actual doors started, Ray himself will occasionally jam with these guys. Like they're all friends. And they play like right on the beach sometimes. It is a right. super fun night. It is right. super, super fun. But uh, anyway, yeah, the I, yeah, I feel like to to truly love the Doors, you kind of have to feel the time that they were biggest. Like it's they're they're a part of that time. And so if you kind of are a student of history and uh, you know really get into like the '60s and stuff, it 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 makes that that music makes sense in that time. Oh yeah, man. And for me, it also just is attached to a lot of really fun college memories too. Like, it's like, that would be like the soundtrack to, hey, we're gonna go out tonight and we're, we're gonna have a couple beers before we go out. And, uh, you know, I think about that and I think how like, wow, if I had to drink with 21 year old me today, I would die. I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't make it through the evening. <laughs> couldn't keep up? I No, I couldn't, man. I could not. I could not keep up with 23 year old, 20, well, 23 year old me, I'd have a better shot, but like 18 to like 22 year old me, no freaking way. Like 22 year old me be like, we're ready to go out. And I'm like, I'm in bed, I'm done. Nowadays, uh, you know, I, I, I still enjoy a drink, but nowadays it's like, you know, I'm even hesitant. Like, oh wait, are those, is that, I don't, I don't know if I can do whiskey and then vodka. I don't know what that'll do to my system. That's, that's too weird. I gotta stick with one thing. Yeah. Evening, this is, it's like you get older and all of a sudden your system's like, we had a beer and whiskey, what is happening? Oh yeah. Oh, totally, man. I mean, and for me, it's like other things too. Like, well, I had a couple beers. I probably, if I have this slice of pizza, this night's going to go South. I can't mix those <laughs> things anymore. <laughs> so I, I don't want to get, and I'm going to get to more viewer stuff too. Uh, but uh, I don't want to get like too comedy insider baseball, man, but I got to ask. So, so doing, have you done like band stuff before? Cause I, I know for us, like for comedians, that can sometimes be really fun. Sometimes it's the kiss of death. Sometimes it's in between when you mix the comedy and the music? I am about 70% certain I'll just bomb before. <laughs> bomb. <laughs> How but, much time do you have to do? Oh, it's only like 10 or 15 and I, oh, and, you're just gonna and, have fun. And the other, yeah, the other thing is it's a bit of an experiment. So I was like, I was like, look, you know, if you want to do it, you know, you can hardly pay me. I'll just, you know, fly me out there and we'll, and we'll see how it goes. And we'll go from there because Julia was so excited that, that he was like, he was like, you know, we, and what about opening on this time? And I'm like, let's, let's see how this is first. See how many different items I get thrown at me. And then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. No, it could be, I, I, you know, as you're saying, like a comedian opening for a band, if you do like half of the number of laughs you're used to, then that's a big success. Yeah. You've killed. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know, uh, famously, like Bill Hicks with a tour and open with the the door for the not the doors, the tool, uh, tool, and yeah. and and you know, they they were later after his death, you know, they they were at tool was asked like, how was it? And they were like, oh, we had a blast. He bombed every night. It was just yeah, a lot of fun. He would he would go out at festivals with ten thousand people and say to them, hey, I lost my 
uh, contact lens. Yes. And everyone just look. And he was just happy. He was fucking around. So yeah. it was like, if you look at it that way, you can have a good time. Well, and then there was, uh, there's that famous story about Bobcat Goldthwait where it's like, uh, Kurt Cobain was really into comedy and that's why Bobcat Goldthwait toured with Nirvana for a bit. Really? And, the, and the one night, like in Chicago, Bobcat was like really bombing. And it was around the same time. I forget all the details, but it, it's around the same time that something happened with like Michael Jordan's dad and, 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 Bobcat said something about it to like just piss off the crowd intentionally. <laughs> um, like I'm not remembering all like the details, but he said something on purpose that he knew would piss off the crowd. Like it was something in the news pertinent to Chicago. And he was just, he was just completely fed up. People started booing and people started throwing stuff. And Kurt Cobain apparently was backstage in the wings, kind of laughing his ass off. <laughs> and that's how Bobcat got the rest of the tour. They were like, that was great. We're keeping you around. <laughs> yeah, uh, th that's usually when it works, when the musicians don't, you know, take it too seriously and they just want to have a good time. And yeah, you're, you're playing. Yeah, you're really playing. You're literally playing to the front of the house. Like you cannot <laughs> play more to the front of the house or the, if, I guess, technically back of the house because it's backstage. But right. you're, you're really playing to a niche group. So Jordan wants to know, since, since we went down the music hole, you mentioned that you're into political rap. Are you a fan of either POS or Astronautilus? I'm not familiar with either of those acts myself, but uh, are you? No, no. But like I said, I, the, the past, especially since uh, the Redacted Tonight show, I've been so busy that I've stopped like, finding new stuff, which, you know, kind of sucks, but... It's kind of a job, man. I mean, it really is. And I think part of it is also getting a little older. I mean, I, I was really, really into music in high school and I still love it just as much, but I don't have the type of time that I had to really go find stuff. And plus, when I was really finding stuff all the time, it was kind of before uh, the scene we have now, as far as like everything that's changed with the internet. Like, I, like I'm still, like I'm just old enough to remember when you would go to a certain venue, when you had an alliance to a couple of different yeah. record labels, when you would look for flyers and stuff like that. And even though that stuff still goes on, um, you know, it, it's a lot different now. And, and I don't, you know, I, I don't exactly know. Like I have a few blogs that I've migrated to, like I have certainly evolved with the times, but, um, but I'm not able to do it quite the way I, I well, used to. Well, and, and stand up comedy has, you know, some, some parallel, uh, growth in that way too that you know the clubs are all disappearing and people don't have they don't have that allegiance to like oh i'm gonna they, you know they might have a couple but there's not that many comedians they're gonna be like when's he coming to town i gotta see it and and uh all that stuff so yeah it, it, it you know people just with, with so much free content out there so much on youtube so much on netflix it's it, get, going out to see live shows is like a dwindling art i feel like yeah, but before we get off the topic, I also got to say real quick, have you ever heard of Jasari X? That sounds familiar. I'll send you some stuff if you're not familiar with him. He He's uh, he's actually out of, he's from my hometown. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the uh, very, very good political hip hop, super okay. socially conscious stuff, really, really good. And, and he's doing well. He does a lot of colleges um, and he does, you know, like just a lot of different, like activist events and stuff like that. And he's hard to keep track. He tours a lot. Like he's got to be doing, yeah. he probably does about 40 some weeks a year. Wow. Uh, or at least last time I was following him, he, that's what Brown, what he was doing. Get your news on with Ron. Did you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Did you want to know what's going on? together and make it our own get your news on with ron if you want to know what's going on getting our news on today 